Good evening, InstaFam. It's MC Andrew Love back on your full screen one more time. And welcome to another edition of Let's Chat and Jam. Now today, it's a little different. Now everybody's used to me hosting, you know, hip-hop artists, R&B artists, and maybe even some A&Rs every now and again. But today, it's a little different. Today I bring to you a brother that I knew. Uh, he's from New York City. He lives in New York City. Uh, he's, he is an opera. They call him the... They call him the... Uh, the, the um, you know... The, 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 I can't even think straight today, man. David Cerrero is a big deal, man. And so, um, this show is with David Cerrero. Let me let him know that I'm live. Let him hear David Cerrero. I'm live. All right. So we're waiting for David Cerrero to come through. David Cerrero. Now, this guy is the host of this uh, show called The Culture News. David Cerrero's in the building. Welcome to the show, Mr. David Cerrero. Allow me to get David Cerrero in here real quick. Go live with David Cerrero. Hey, hello, hello, brother. David Cerrero. <laughs> Good to see hey, you. Hey, brother. Good to see you, brother. How you doing, my friend? Oh, man. I, I can't complain, man. I can't complain. It's good to see you in face-to-face, -face, finally. Brother, you have no idea how much I admire what you're doing. Oh, man. You know, it, this started after the COVID, man. It was like, oh, yeah. as, soon as, as soon as the pandemic hit, it was like, there was something I got to do. I got to do something. I don't know what to do, but I got to do something. And so but you're Instagram, doing a lot already. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I got this. Uh, I'm I'm a vice president of Petrucci Entertainment USA division. You know, liaison to Radio in the International USA. Beautiful. And then, uh, yeah, I'm the CEO of Urban Junction Entertainment. That's my own wow. side business. And we push out music, you, but you know about that. And you're, then I, you're uh, amazing. I love everything you do. You know. Even if you take the yellow pages and you read them, I would say he is amazing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I love your look, man, with the with the hat and everything. Ah, old school, that. old school. That's the real thing. It's old school. Yeah. It's all Swag, in man. the old school. When music was music, brother. When people knew, when people knew how to sing about love, right? Oh yeah, that's what it's all about. That is what but it's you, all about. You were the you were the ambassador of the arts, man. So you can't oh, you really give me all the accolades. I gotta give you the accolades. No, listen, no, you're too sweet. I was just jamming to one of your songs just now, man. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, it will go away. It will go away. You know. <laughs> you know when I when I started shows. I, I used to say my like my first concert and everything. I say, guys, don't worry. The most difficult with me is the first hour, you know. <laughs> <laughs> After you don't pay attention anymore, you know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, dude, I saw I, I I heard in on Instagram they have some of your records from your plays. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, musicals, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, your musicals. So I. I, that's, I think that's one of the clips I played on the preview, on the promo to, for the mm. show. Thank you, bro. Your, yes, I think you are very talented, man. It's, it's oh, amazing. Sweet. Yeah, I mean, shoot, you, you are a host of the Culture News, which is like basically what I do in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. and Not you, as you, good as you. Not as good as you. Oh, uh, come on, dude. You're, you're <laughs> like, uh, you interviewed me like, what, three times already? Yeah, on your show? man. And I think you I, I had amazing. that show. It's been like um, seven, I think it's seven years, it's starting the eight years. And originally at the beginning, I was the one like really bombarding uh, press agents and say, please, I'm looking for people to interview. <laughs> and, and the concept was like, um, because, you know, I couldn't uh, afford the studio or have a big studio because no one believed in it. And I was like, look, I'm going to interview people over the phone. 
You know, I'm yeah. going to call them on the phone and say, how are you doing? How is everything? And then we're going to talk about it, uh, talk about what they're up to. And uh, so it was on the phone with David Sarriro, you know, because I couldn't copyright on the phone because it was uh, too generic. So I had to use the trademark, which was on the phone with David Sarriro. I say that because a lot of people sometimes they ask, why artists, we put our names everywhere. It's also for trademark and copywriting uh, purposes. So anyway, so, so I, I had that and it was like over the phone and now it's the opposite. Now it's bombarded every day between 300 to 500 requests uh, every day from artists. And I met amazing people, including yourself. And, and I always love to promote the work of, uh, of uh, extraordinary people, whether it's uh, people from the industry, but also, you know, some cancer survivors, some people who have an organization, uh, other artists, uh, uh, the average Joe, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, a little bit of uh, of everything, and and if it's music artists to play their music, also, you know. Yeah, I I see that you have a variety of of people you interview on your show, so it's actually it's pretty cool to listen to your back episodes and the, the variety of guests that you had over the over course of the years. Over one thousand episodes. Over one thousand. One thousand episodes, man. That's about oh, as yeah, long. Yeah. As some some people I some shows never lasted that long. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's <laughs> yeah. the sometimes I, what's interesting is you, you have to do the talk, uh, because you have sometimes people they, they're very good like on stage and performing, but uh over the phone in an interview, the kind of uh people are very few words, you know, and they say, Yeah, sure, no. <laughs> yes, you know, <laughs> so you're like, oh, that's amazing. So now let's talk about your album. What motivated you to do it? Well, I wanted to do it, so I did it. Okay, great. And how about, you know, <laughs> you're like struggling and, and, and the press agent still was like, thank you, thank you. You know? <laughs> you, know, you know what I like about what I do is I get to bounce off the other person. So like mm. some people, some people said to me, I don't know how you do it live, bro. That's, that's, that's really crazy how you do it live and mm. how you don't stutter sometimes. And, uh, sometimes I, I can, uh, I can I draw a blank, you know, like if I'm, if I'm, I'm, I'm talking to David Cerrero, like yourself, a celebrity as you, such as you are. You're too kind. Yeah. You know, what I don't understand what's mind boggling to me is how you're not verified on Instagram. I mean, you are like the dude. You're the uh, shiznit. You have a lot of fans. You got yeah. fans worldwide. You're uh, world you're renowned. Everybody's heard of David Cerrero. If you haven't uh, heard of David Cerrero, you've you're been living sweet, under rocks. <laughs> I've heard of David Cerrero. I've heard of David Cerrero. No, you, listen, yeah, you're, you're way, 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 way too kind. No, it's, I'm, that was part of my strategy from the beginning is that I never situated myself as a French artist. Uh, um, you know, these days people love to label themselves, you know, and they say, uh, as a black artist, as a, as a American artist, as a French person, as a member of that community, as a Jewish artist, you know, I, I never labeled myself, you know, and I've always been positioned myself on the international platform and, and be like, look, I'm citizen of the world and whoever wants to push my door um first i bring the door to you <laughs> <laughs> and and then i will open it for you and put cookies on the way so that you will walk inside it you know what i mean so it, i always enjoyed the 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 large platform and and i i personally love instagram and uh, it's a very distracting because uh, sometimes you know, I don't want to spend too much time on it because it's a drug. It's like TikTok, man. It's so funny on TikTok. You see so funny stuff. But on the, the other way, you, then after you look at your watch, you're like, oh, my God, I spent two hours on it, you know. And yeah. so I, I try not to spend too much time. But I met amazing people. And I, I'm so focused on my work that um, I don't have a lot of time to call friends and say, hey, what have you been up to, you know. So Instagram and all these social media helps me to kind of keep track on uh, on people I love, such as yourself, you know, and 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 see what they're up to. So that's that's cool, you know. Yeah, that is cool. 
So um, I have a question for you. Of course, bro. Anything you want. Yeah, so out of all your works, everything that you created, what is your favorite so far? Besides being on your show? Yeah, okay. Yeah, besides that. <laughs> Well, you know, I get that question uh, often and I always say my, my favorite project is to the one I'm doing now. You know, always, you know, it's, it's, that's what yeah. keeps me going. It's always the next thing, the new one, you know, the, the next idea, the next. And, and uh, that was a flaw I had at some point because I was too much uh, distracted, too much dispersed, you know, like one day, uh, I want to do this the next day. Oh, I have an idea about that, you know. So, but that's the way I work is, is I will work very hard on a project one day. The next day, I will work very hard on another one. The third day, on no, you know, very hard on another one. So all my projects grow, um, same path. And also the good thing is that when I come back to the project, I come back with fresh eyes. I don't have any sort of fatigue, you know, um, into it. And I'm always like, highly motivated um, into it. And now I'm working on um, producing several artists on my record label. So I'm, I'm doing the production, the arrangements, and it's very exciting to design sounds and music around um, some artists. It's, it's really, really exciting. And also I have uh, one musical that I'm recording now um, that is called Scarface. It's about Al Capone. So it's kind of a new concept because I took songs of the, you know, the era of Capone, 20s, 30s, etc., and I rearranged them in a hip hop style. And on the other end, um, songs of the modern era, which I rearranged in the 1920s, 30s, jazz, big band thing. So, and I cast like artists from very different horizons. So it's, um, it's really, really, it's, it comes out really, really spectacular. I'm very, very proud of it. And uh, I never thought I would do such things. So I'm, it's, I'm very, very excited. So when you are even recording it and you're like, oh my God, it sounds great. Then it, it usually leads to something cool, you know? So, but there is this and, and I'm writing, is the first musical that I'm writing, really the music and everything. Uh, a one-man uh, musical about Leonardo da Vinci, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very, uh, very new. Um, so working on it every day and, of course, finishing uh, documentaries and, uh, and TV series that I'm producing. So it's, it's quite busy, but, you know, I, I, I love it. I really love it. All these projects, the more you have, the better for me, you know. Yes, I, I can see that. You keep yourself uh, busy, but if you're not yeah. busy, you're you're bored. So then but what, you know, what I agree with you. But you know, I realize yeah. one thing is that you can be busy, but it doesn't mean you achieve things. You know, uh, that that's what I realized. By example, you can be busy, and in your schedule of the day, I don't know, you have uh, at uh, two p.m. you you're meeting with a friend, and four p.m. you go to the hairdresser, you know, at 5 p.m. you go to the gym, then after you have to cook uh, for the evening and then you watch a movie and you were like, oh my God, so busy today, you know, but yeah. what have you accomplished? It's not the same thing, you know? Good so question. if you can focus even five minutes, you can accomplish more in five minutes than in, in someone else's uh, full day. So I want every day, I, always, I want to do something for each project I have and uh, accomplish and make it grow, definitely, you know. Yeah, that's, that's uh, kind of like where I'm at too, man. Oh, yeah, life. absolutely. You know, uh, I want to, you know, set myself some goals and uh, make sure they're achievable, you know, before I set, like, I don't want to set a goal like I want to get myself a Maserati in the mm. next two years. Why not? I don't like Maserati. <laughs> no, you don't like Buy it and give it no, to me. I no. will like it for you. you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, sure you know you what? Know. Let me tell you. I had Ferrari. I had it all. And uh, there's nothing like the relationship you can have with people. That's really where the richness is. 
honestly, you know, you know, and after right. when you start to make good money, the idea that you can buy that Ferrari is stronger than owning it. I promise you. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, but you, so, can you know, I bought I bought myself a uh, 2018 Chevrolet Traverse. Ooh, good for you, man. Yeah, I bought it, I bought it I bought it for uh, traveling purposes because I knew mm. I was getting into music and I needed something big to accommodate the other artists that I work with. Mm -hmm. So I drove that truck all over the northeast of New York wow. City, and I've been in New York City so many times I can't count. <laughs> so like, so like when you said the last time I remember talking to you, you said when you come to Manhattan, look yeah. me up. Yeah. So I tried, but you're such a busy man. Oh, I the time I came to Manhattan, I think he was out. No, but like, ne next time, let me know. You know, now in New York, it, everything is closed. There's all the um, all restaurants. Like it, today, yesterday was the last draw for me. I was like, the, not only indoors are closed, you know, but now we have a snowstorm in the outdoors. So I was like, what? <laughs> All right, yeah. whatever. I'm going to go to Miami uh, next week, man. I want to take some vacation and, uh, you know. Well, as long as you mask up and, and, and wash your hands and social yeah. distance, you'll be okay. And listen to your music. Yeah, li well, yeah listen to your music is what I'm <laughs> Not saying. to yours, yes, bro. <laughs> yeah, so... I'm listening to your music. This is Let's Chat and Jam, man. And uh, I like different music. I, I've I've been a fan. Of, like I like bluegrass music. I like I like opera. I love uh, Luciano Pavarotti. He's one of my favorites. Uh, and I can go back. Like, I like go back to history. I like old school music. Yeah. And so when I when I was in Orlando one time, I think I was in Orlando for my wedding. Uh, my, my, you know, my honeymoon, and I thought I heard you singing. I was like, "Oh, that must be David Sirico <laughs> up there singing uh, opera." And I really thought it was you, man. Oh, and that's, man. You're that's too, why I you're hit too you sweet. Up. I said, "Hit you up." I said, "David Sirico, is that you singing <laughs> out there on the balcony in that Italian restaurant?" That honestly, that could be me. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, "That's got to be Mr. Sirico, man." Oh, uh, singing I'm like very that. David, bro. Yeah. So you released the song back in uh, uh yeah just recently. I can't even pronounce it, David. So I won't. Which one? It's in French. It's it's to. Oh yeah, you see, tu n'existais pas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so the it's, one. Uh, it, it's a uh, it's a very famous French song, which was uh, made famous by um, Mike Brandt, and. Um, and it's in that song actually got very well known in all Russia, you know, in all Russia, Ukraine, because in those days, uh, back to Soviet Union, um, American music was not so much heard in Russia. So the only thing that they loved to hear was all the old French chanson, all the old French stuff. So they love singers like Aznavour, like Mireille Mathieu, like Joe Dassin, you know. Um, and uh, it's Joe Dassin, actually, who sang originally, uh, Si Tu N'Existe Pas. And it was, I believe, an Italian song originally. And, uh, and it got so famous in, in French. And I made somehow a jazz arrangement, which I uh, orchestrated and produced. And, um, and yeah, people seem, seem to like it. And talking about jazz and, and French, I, on my new album, which is soon going to be released, um, and I released two tracks already as a single. Um, I took um, American charts, pop songs, which I rearranged in a jazz style with French lyrics. So it's wow. like my French touch, you know? And uh, that's the name I think I'm going to use for the album, my French touch, my French jazzy touch, something like that. And, uh, and yeah, people, people love it, you know? It went... There are like uh, dozens and dozens of thousands of streams. So it's a uh, foreign opera singer. It's it's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. Uh, when mm -hmm. are you going to release it? Well, the album, I think, in uh, uh, in beginning of 2021, I think, first, second week of uh, January 2021. 
and uh, otherwise there are already singles available on Spotify and all the major platforms and uh, yeah I, I really can't wait you'll be the first one to know bro yes so I'm gonna uh, go in your music archives man on, mm. on Instagram oh my god what you gonna find uh, oh my god you know <laughs> yeah. yeah well see I, I was listening to Say So um, yeah that Say So actually jazz. which I yeah yeah, which French is a jazz French, version. Yeah, yeah, French jazz version. Yeah, I was listening to that before we, we started speaking. And uh, oh, thank I you. was like, oh, man, I really like this. It's really jazzy. Yeah. yeah. Really smooth. All the, great, all the great songs, they usually sound very, very good in jazz. A lot of the great stuff. All the best stuff, like even Michael Jackson, you know, Thriller, by example, albums like that. You put them in jazz, they sound phenomenal. I, you know, maybe I should uh, start thinking about singing jazz myself. Then. Of course, yeah. man. It's the best. Get into it. That's what is great about jazz is that anything is rock and roll. You know what I mean? Like, doesn't matter how you, how you put it. It's, it's your interpretations. You own it. You know, it's like, you know, like the songs, it don't mean a thing if you ain't got, you know, it don't. It should be, it doesn't, right? But they yeah. went full throttle in it and say it don't mean a thing you know yeah. if you ain't got the swing you know so it it shows really that you can um bring your own color into it and it's still you know like hey you know it's 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 uh, it's jazz it's rock you know yes yeah well jazz is a beautiful um beautiful genre and yeah, that's basically where R and B started. It started from oh yeah, jazz, definitely blues. Went to the blues, rock, pop, you know, everything. Yeah. Everything comes from jazz. Everything. Yeah, jazz is like the parent of all music. Mm -hmm. Say Abraham is the father of all religions. That's yeah. a good one. I'm gonna use it. Yes. Yeah. All I'm right, man. Use so it I from, I'm gonna this. steal it I from wanna, you. I wanna you play know. some of your music. I want to oh, first. I want to play your. I want to play your newest release, the the one you remade, the French version. I want. Hey, so? uh, yes, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't pronounce it, but yeah, I want to play that. Yeah, and I want to let you seem to have some fans up here in the chats, bro. And uh, oh, I'm so sorry. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta sorry, get away from know. the camera, man. Uh, yo, yo, Paula Laura, yo, Paula Laura, man. That's she's thank saying, you. She's saying, yo, Paula she Laura, was, thank you. Yeah, she was thank like, you, Can you please sing? Can you sing for us? And so what? I was like, You know, I'm gonna just play his music so he can look like he's sick, he can lip sync. <laughs> you know, I remember when. When I was driving, you know, and there was a guy coming around my window and, and started like he wanted to have an argument that I was just too tired of, of, of replying, you know. So I would be through the window and I would turn and make face like I was screaming, you know. So basically I was like this, I turn and I go. That's what I was. That's what I was the last doing. Time I spoke with you. And look, I just received. I show it to you, the costume of Leonardo da Vinci. You see, um, huh? and that's the. Don't ask me to wear it, you know now, because it's. I think the red is too strong. It should be something you find more. That, um, you got. You wear that. You, you you find that that everybody when you go to cosplays they ask you to wear your outfits. To wear, your cosplays. Your your cos. You know, costume events. Oh, the, the casting asking, events? Look, no, you the, know when you go to like a like a Trek event, you know, a Star Trek fans. They have oh, Trek yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody be wearing yeah, yeah. their Star Trek costumes. Do you wear yours? No, man. I wish I had time to go there, man. It's it's uh, but I love Star Wars. Yeah, what I'm saying is, do you wear your costumes of your plays out and about? 
Like outside? Yeah. No, man, I would. If, I mean, look, the, the stuff I play are very classical, you know. So I have swords and everything. So if I walk like that in the streets, especially with my face, you know, they're going to call 911 immediately. You know what I mean? They can understand <laughs> the terrorist, uh, uh, anti terrorist, the counter terrorism division. You know, so there's a guy who thinks he's. <laughs> <laughs> Thinks he's Napoleon or something, you know. But I did film um, a trailer for a um, uh, TV series I'm, I, I wrote uh, called Napoleon in New York. And I did film like some images on Times Square where it's basically Napoleon who wakes up in New York in, in 2020. And uh, so I did film some, in, you know, with the hat and everything. And I was pretty sure that people would be around me and saying, hey, are you crazy or, you know. And actually, nobody cared. You know, <laughs> this is the yeah. amazing thing about New York is that there's always crazier than you. So, you you know, nobody really, really paid attention to it, you know. No, nobody really cares anymore nowadays, 2020, because mm. no one's really looking at what you're doing. Everybody's worried about themselves nowadays. They should. Which Honestly, is, they should. They should. Which is kind of like ironic how people will go outside without wearing masks. Mm. So my thing is, if you cared about yourself so much, why would you want to go out there and risk your life? Mm -hmm. That's all. No, I'm definitely, saying. people should do so. You know, where, but you know, I, I I have unfortunately the feeling that you know I had all my shows that got that I shut down because I mean I shut down because I had to, but also because it was the safest things to do, and and I don't think really that. I will reopen any of my shows before March 2022. Wow. Know? So, yeah, yeah. So, Broadway is not open before. Vaccine June, you know? out there, people are taking. You think that's going to work? I think it's going to work, but in order for it to work, you need at least 80% of the population to take it, you know? So, it's going to take a lot of time and, and hopefully it's going to work. But, um, it's not just so much about the virus anymore. It's also, of course, the virus. There is the vaccine, thank God, and and things are gonna um, uh, are gonna come out well. But what really uh, worries me also is for New York. I'm talking is what we call the financial recovery, because we we need um, also audiences not just to uh, to have enough financials to go to see a show. You know. Even though some shows are like ten dollars or twenty dollars or thirty dollars, it's not the end of the world. But we are in an era where, first of all, a lot of people left New York, a lot of restaurant closed, a lot of people left the city. So it's going to take time before people come again, and uh, and I just cannot afford to open with fifty percent of my of my theater or twenty percent of my theater. I need full capacity and everything to come back to more than normal. So that is going to take, I think, at least another year, you know. So fingers crossed. I mean, I would love to reopen tomorrow, don't get me wrong, but I have to to think what's the best for for, for the audience and the best for, for, uh, for also for the shows because me, you know, I do shows. I, I don't, I'm not afraid to, to uh, dream high, you know. Like, I, I don't want to perform for five people even though – I've done it, even though I still do it, even though I would always do it. Um, I want to perform in stadiums. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the, the, I want to bring my shows there. And uh, now the good thing is that with streamings, by example, on Amazon, I have a great partnership with Amazon. And, uh, and my shows now, I, I've shown to millions of people. So that I'm really happy about. But we, we have to maintain the, the, the stage thing because... If it's, um, for me, if it's good on stage, it would be also good on camera. You know what I mean? So we, we the stage for me is what keeps me, you know, um, fresh, you know. I can dig it. You know, the last time I was on a play, I did do some plays in my day. Yeah, yeah. I did do some stage work, but I was in elementary school and, uh, and I did some stage work. I, I played an elf in one of the oh. uh, Christmas plays. Yeah. You know, sure, man. Yeah, it was, it was a, an experience. And then I had some TV time. I did some shows on TV. 
I did a show when Ooh, I was in, uh, I was about five years old, and they, wow. they called it the uh, STM Showboat. It was a local show right here out of Syracuse, New York, and uh, they took it off the air after a while. But I was wondering if they have old videotapes, old archives. Mm. So I would like you to should, go see. You if should I get that. That's that's yeah. one thing I've always been. Uh, I always wanted to keep uh, some archives. You know, some uh, yes. uh, stuff. This is why I I, I filmed a lot. Almost every single performance I have, if I don't film them, I put my phone to record only the audio, you know, near the the entrance of the artist. So I have almost every performances. Um, I, I have at least the audio, at least. Wow. And if not, I have video. So it's important also for security reasons. If, you know, uh, an actor hurts himself or herself on stage that we have the video, you know. Yeah. Um, or if you improvise something on stage and someone says, oh, he said something not appropriate or an audience member said something, we have the audio, you know. So I keep a lot of, uh, uh, of that uh, for that purpose. But uh, also, you know, it's nice even during the, the lockdown, the COVID, uh, um, I, I, I went through a lot of my hard drives of uh, archives and stuff and I watch shows that I don't like. 10, 15 years ago, and, and you're like, wow, it was enough, another time, you know. But uh, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. So why you should, you should keep all these uh, archives, you know. Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I got your song queued up, man. Mm -hmm. And so, so this is Let's Chat and Jam. And so we've been chatting for the last half hour. So now mm -hmm. it's time for us to jam. All so right. We're we're gonna go. We're gonna dive into some of your musical pieces that you have done, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, I really feel that you're very talented. Oh, that, you're sweet, brother. Yeah, you you have a lot of uh, potential to be a, the one of the greatest opera singers I've ever heard. Oh, you have brother. potential. You're too kind. You Thank ain't you there brother. yet, David. To reroll, yeah, but, but you almost. The fact you're that getting you there. believe in it, it's for me <laughs> the greatest reward. You know. Someone who believes in you is the is, is the biggest reward you can get. Yeah. Well, I always believed in you ever since I met you, man. Thank when you, brother. I, I appreciate when, it. The first the first uh, interview I did with you, I thought it was a big deal, and I was oh, excited you, to do it. And I was like, I was telling all my artists like Lock Seven and uh, and yeah, Mac DMC. I was yeah. like, man, this is David Shapiro, man. It's a big deal. You know what this is? Oh, this is this kind. is the 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 uh, ambassador of the arts. Oh, man. You're too sweet. And, and that's not what you call yourself. This is what the people call you. Oh, so, you're too so sweet. because of that, you know. But it's mostly my dad that. calls me like that. That's it, you know. <laughs> I don't think it was your dad giving the, the write up, man. Not that. Oh, uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. See, the one thing I like about you is how humble you are. So that's, oh, that's really man. cool. That your, your fame has not gone to your head. You know what? You, I, I, um, I. The the only thing is that I made so much of a promise to myself that when I was a very poor student, I would go to to meet people, not even like big stars, like just people who had the name, you know, and I would see how they were treating other people. Like, for example, I was waiting like two hours in the cold outside to get you know an autograph or a photo that was before the photo were on the phone, you know, and, uh, yeah. and people were walking out like this without even hello, without even anything. And, and I was like, I swear to myself, I would never be like this. I would never, ever be like this. And, um, and, and I, you know, I've been to the positions where I had in the first shows that I produced, you know, like even back to 20 years ago, where I had like, three or zero people showing up you know in this situation where you are with the other actors and with the theater owner in and we're like are we playing yes or no tonight you know because you know did it make sense and then i was going to the streets and with tickets in, in the old days you know and i would give to people please come to see the show and somehow i ended up having 20 people coming you know so these things you know i laugh about it now but back in those days you know they were very very uh, um it was very painful in a way so 
what I mean is that I will always, always appreciate what, what it means to have a full house. You know, when yeah. I perform my shows in, in, in New York, like off Broadway and, uh, and I see full houses and with standing ovation and on, on new shows, shows that I've never p- been performed before. So they don't come for the show because nobody knows them, you know, but they come because yeah. I reach out to them and I, and I put my name up there and, and they trust my, um, I think my, uh, my work ethics that I will make it as great as possible. You know, of course it's not perfect, but they know that I would do until 7.59, you know, PM, like a minute before 8 PM, I would do anything that is physically and humanly possible to make them, at great. This is why I'm, I'm very, very um, exigent toward the, the actors that I hired or the musicians. And, and, uh, and it is true. Yeah, I'm very exigent, you know, but I have no choice. I, I owe it to the trust that the audience is um, willing to, to, to give me. And, and honestly, you're as good as your last project. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, it doesn't matter. I have done 2,500 performances throughout the world. People, if I go to my next show and I crack a high note and I don't do well and everything, that's what people will remember. You know, it, it's, it's not really fair, but, but that's the world we live in. And, uh, and you have to, I have to embrace that and make it as great as, as possible. So I, I really don't think I can get... Uh, 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 over my head and there is always you know when you see people like uh, you know what's her name I don't know Miley Cyrus who has over 200 million fans on Instagram you're like bro man who am I compared to, to, to these giants you know so for me really uh, success is really defined by the, the, the length of, of your career and, and your achievements, you know. Um, I'm lucky that for the last 20 years, I've had work every single day, you know. Doesn't mean I made millions every day, but I had work every single day. And for me, that worth really gold, you know. I can dig it. And it, yeah, shows, it. it, show, it shows in your, um, in your work. Oh, thank you, bro. So and I love listening to your your uh, musical albums and your plays, uh, your recorded plays on Spotify. I think it's I don't understand half of the language you record in, <laughs> but um, but it's the thing is about it is it's, it's still entertaining because it's a story being told. Now I'm just trying to figure out what it is. I wish I had like um, I wish I wish Rosetta Stone worked instantaneously. So like when <laughs> I'm listening. She's automatically giving me the words in English. So that way I don't have to think, like, okay, what does this mean? But anyway, uh, music is a universal language. So even if you don't speak the language, like you can still understand the music and you can yeah. still feel the passion behind every lyric. That's um, right. I mean, I've listened to K-pop and I've listened to Japanese pop. And it's like, to me, it's like music is music. And no matter what language it is, it's still enjoyable and it's still an experience. Yeah. So, it's like, you know, ballet. When you look at ballet, there is not even words. There are not even words in ballet. But yet we can share emotions, you know. So language is amazing. And I'm, I'm so happy that I invested in languages, that I learned English, that I learned Russian, that I learned Italian, you know and that I sing in about 15 different languages, but it was like a strong investment because you, you know, you have to be willing to ask to other people to correct you when you do a mistake. And, uh, and, you know, I wish sometimes people would be like, man, you do Shakespeare in English and English is not even your native language. Wow. I, I, I wish people would tell me that, to be honest with you. Well, well when I watch yeah. one of your plays, and if it's in English, I'll tell you that. Eh? Yeah. I'll put it live <laughs> on my Instagram while I talk to you in person. I was like, hey, David Serrero, this is <laughs> dope, man. <laughs> I'm digging the vibes. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I'm digging the vibes. 
So before we continue on, at least let me play a couple of your pieces for the fans. Thank you, bro. Because they've been patiently waiting for us to continue on to the next stage of the conversation. Do you say so? Do you have say so? Yes, I do have say so. Play, you can pl play that one, it's fun. I will definitely play that. Here yeah. it is. This is Say So, the French jazz version, right here on Let's Chat and Jam, mm -hmm. with my guest, David Serrigro. <laughs> Yeah, man. I love that song. Did you produce this? Yep. I did the arrangements. I did wow. all the instruments and uh, the adaptation in French. Mm. Well, you, you did an awesome job, man. Yeah. Thank you, bro. I sent it very, to Doja Cat. I sent it to her. You sent it to Doja Cat? Yeah, yeah. But I got the authorization from her because she wrote the song. You cannot just record it like this. Yeah. She loved it. That makes sense. But she yeah. liked it, though. Oh, that's good, man. She put a like to it, so I guess she liked it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you got some chops, man. Thank you, bro. I didn't know you could sing this good. Oh, man, thank you. I don't know either. You have your own style, don't tell me. You got your own style, man. It's like... So here you see the thing. She, it was like a rap thing that she, she did. So what I did, I made it spoken. Yeah, I like it. I thought it was... I thought it was like, uh, a, a suave, suave thing you did. A, yeah, yeah. And I love Barry White, the way he speaks in the pop. I, I love that. That's, that was original, what you did. That, that made it your, your own song. Yeah. It changed the whole Absolutely. vibe. I love that. Mm. Yeah, man. I could dance to this all night, man. You make I don't me know like how to it. dance you know to jazz, but I'll figure it out. Je veux soir ensemble, reste avec moi si tu trompes. Je t'aurais laissé si tu trompes. Pourquoi tu ne dis rien? Je n'ai même pas remarqué ce qui m'a fait tant aimer. Tu me veux tout concentrer, tu me veux dire le. Yeah. David <laughs> Hold on, I gotta turn on the lights. Gotta turn the lights on. Oh man, you gotta grab it. Let me see if I have some funny filter. No, okay, I'm bad with that. Yeah, I didn't have a filter. I just turned the lights on. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you played it. Thank you, bro. You know, it's the first wow. time that I'm filmed listening to my own music. You know, first time I'm, you know, it's, I like it. Top <laughs> Down Ed is coming on next. Thank you, brother. Thank that you. Was, uh, that was really good. You, oh, you got some more guests, more fans in there. Wow, you, oh, they're I'm the sweet, you fans, the sweetest. Yeah, your fans just come out of nowhere. Ah, so David Cerrero, I didn't know you were that talented, man. I mean, I knew oh, you were talented. I, did, I, I, I didn't know you were that talented. Well, you I'm just more took a hard worker song, than talented. You took a song from Doja Cat and you flipped it and made yep. it yours. It's just amazing yep. what you did, did with that yeah. piece. I, I did you, that you also that for, um, I, uh, what's it, the song? Shape of You, uh, Ed Sheeran. You did I that? Did it also is going to be, yeah, it's going to be released. And I uh -huh. did... And I just did uh, for the musical Scarface uh, a version of Thriller 
which I adapted in a jazz um, arrangement, but I have an amazing talent. His name is Frank Humphrey, and uh, who recorded it. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do a, a new album just for him. He's absolutely terrific. Absolutely. Wow. What's, it, what's the name of the... Oh, you haven't released a single that I take. For the the thriller, not yet. I mean, it's submitted for distribution, but things are so slow that it's not... Uh, you, it might take another week, but I hope soon, you know? Yeah, I can't wait to hear it, man. Because I'm a big yeah. Michael Jackson fan, man, so... It, it's on YouTube. If you go on YouTube and you put the thriller Scarface or, or thriller, uh, you know, my name, by example, then you can... You can listen to it. Yes, you say less, because I'm going YouTube right now. <laughs> and, and I got I got time. And I got David Cerrero. I'm gonna type your name in. David Thank you, brother. Uh, a thriller. You know. Oh, it says David Cerrero Al Capone or Scarface. Yep. That's the name of the show. Oh, okay. So I'll put thriller next to your name. Hit enter. See what comes up. David Cerrero on TV series Whistleblowers. No, USA no, no. That's, 2016. That's... <laughs> Is that you, David Cerrero, in the Whistleblowers show? Yeah, yeah, that's a show that was on uh, Spike TV, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I remember that. Now, I wish no, I would have known you show, back then. But he didn't, because then um... I would have said, that's my man. That's David uh, Cerrero. I know him. And they would have been I was like, playing, oh, you uh, don't know uh, him. Paki Pakistanese. Uh, secret agent, which was yeah, you know man. new, but uh, helping the CIA to we arrest bring that uh, back, terrorists. Man. We should bring that back, bring it to Netflix. Oh man, I would love to, but um, I don't know what happened to it. But it was really, really a good show. It really, really was. So, I remember it. It was brief, mm, but I remember it. It was I good. Yeah, it was really a couple of episodes. I oh, thank you, man. It was really good. It was really a good thing. I think. No, it is what it is these days, you know, you're happy when the, when things uh, are down and sad when they don't uh, continue, you know. I found it. Thriller, Scarface, the Al Capone yeah. musical, Frank Humphrey. You got it. Let's, let's take a check. Let's take a listen to it. Listen see? to it a little bit. Listen to yes, it. Yes, let's check it out. So it's like, me who did like all the arrangements, all the instruments, everything. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Al Capone's Club. Now, so in the story, this is in Al Capone's Club. Something deep is lurking in the dark. Wow, dude. <laughs> he really did it. He said he did it. He really did, yo. Here it is. It was yo, all in my head, man. Can you do this, too? <laughs> Whoa. I love Michael Jackson. This is amazing. Uh -huh. Frank Humphreys? He's really, really good. Yeah, he's a I gotta get singer. Frank Humphrey on the show, man. He is awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's really, really good. Woo! Anything sounds good in jazz. <laughs> said that. And now hear the claps. Do we see? If you ever see the sun, you close your eyes and hope that this is just imagination. You see the symbol against the beat. No, it's a, it's a great, they're all the tracks that I have uh, recorded and performed in the, 
in this musical um, uh, there is brother can you spare a dime mini the moochier uh, my heart belongs to wow. daddy sang by another wonderful singer marcy richardson and recently i just uh recorded three more tracks from that musical and uh, one is living on a prayer uh, oh, eye of a tiger and oh, you give man. love a bad name which i oh. rearranged in a jazz burlesque blues type and i have amazing singer named lisa bouchel who is a very well known uh, female rock singer and i'm going to have another great singer for ed lee of uh, beyonce uh, where she sings deja vu and uh, what's the other song uh, crazy in love and i mix both together crazy with a jazz love. arrangement big band you know you're teasing me man you're teasing me dog you're teasing me. ah bro you you gotta Thank give you, it to me man I'm you just open. can't just tease me I love... bites. you just gotta give it to me so i can get it all in brother I it's you're it the first all one in, to know David Ciro, gotta get it all uh, in, man. brother thank you man i need you're some the first one to know my life yes that is beautiful beautiful I'm, man I yo, love yo, to collaborate wanna... with Listen, any I... artist. I... Hey, let me speak to America real quick, Mr. Cerebro. How you doing, America? It is I, MC Andrew Love. We are Let's Chat and Jam. And this is my guest, Mr. David Cerebro, the ambassador of the arts. Uh, and let see. me just say something to y'all, man. This brother here is so talented. I mean, he's got talent coming out of his ears. That's how talented he is. And um, too sweet. Yeah, he's 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 so talented. He's got music, he's got plays, he's got musicals, he's got speeches, he's got old television series in archives somewhere, probably on demand. All you gotta do is go look for them. All you gotta do is type in David Cerrero on Google and he'll pop right up. This man oh, sweet. works hard at what he does. Thank you, bro. Craft. And I'm a, a proud to be an honored and humbled to be considered a friend of yours. And so, oh, uh, brother, anytime. You're a friend of mine, dude, and I'll be- Me too. Uh, you'll be my friend forever, man. Uh, the same for a, you, man, anytime. You're a, really, you're a cool you, dude, You know, man. you want to tell you something that, that happened when you said a hard worker that made me think of that? Um, they, the, the other day, you know, I bumped into one of my neighbor and, uh, and my, my neighbor was like, oh, you're the opera singer that we hear sometimes? And I'm like, Oh, I'm so sorry if that disturbs you. I say, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I watch a good movie, you know, and we hear you singing and I'm like, I want to watch my movie, you know, but, <laughs> but, but, but she said something very sweet. She says, but I admire that sometimes I hear you redo a knot 20 times until you have it the way you want. And I'm like, I'm not going to say anything because I respect that the guy sings it over and over to, um, to make it as great as possible. And we can hear that you always want to do it uh, better. And I was like, you know, it just made my day, you know, <laughs> it's like, and it's yeah. true because I, I learned that from, from a teacher who told me a good singer will make it 10 times to do it good and a very good singer will make it 20 times to do it very good you know and a very very good singer will make it 30 times to do it very very good you know so you i always want to do it very 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 very, very, very good you know so that even I someone must, who, i must learn from the best man i must learn oh, from man, you man i ever learned from you brother because when i'm in the studio uh my engineer and myself, we're, we're such perfectionists too. Like, I gotta keep doing it over and over and over. You know, by the time we get done, I should probably have about a hundred tracks of the same verse. And so Bro, now, I now, feel you. now you have so much you could choose from, and now you have a, a range where you can actually build layers on top of yourself. So mm. you'll have 
out of a hundred times, hundred versions of the same uh, verse, you might have at least a good twenty good takes. Mm. So, so now you can work with those twenty and narrow them down to your top five. Yeah. So it's you see, I used to do like that. I used to do like this. Now what I do is I rehearse them a hundred okay. times. You know, ah. so when I record, I do two takes. First okay. one to warm up. Second take usually is the best one. And third one as a security. Okay. You know, but I'm always like, if I don't have it in two takes, it means I have to work more. I have to study more. Because I used to do like record 120, maybe not 100, but at least like 15, 20 takes, you know, and, and, uh, and going back to the studio many days. But now I, I learned that you work ahead so that when you arrive to the studio, it's very spontaneous, you know? So I, I like better to work um, that way. And, and that I learned from German Jackson. I produced him. I produced an album of German Jackson where I made him sing um, jazz standards. It's called I Wish You Love. And we did a duet together, which was a huge, huge success in was Europe and Russia. released in the United States? Yeah, of course. Put German yeah, Jackson. Spotify. Yeah, it's on Spotify. Oh, man, we got to listen to that, dude. Listen to that. Put Autumn Leaves. Autumn Leaves, German Jackson. Autumn Leaves. And in, in what German taught me is that he told me, you're very obsessed with the sound, you know, of your voice, but don't lose the emotions. So you can make it very perfect, very, you know, straight tones and everything. But he said, don't lose the feelings because that's what people you know, remember at the end is, is the feelings. Here you are, dude, David Cerrero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo, listen, y'all know Jermaine Jackson. Jermaine Jackson is the brother of Michael Jackson. Do you understand how long Jermaine Jackson has been singing? And for him to get on a record with David Cerrero, that's a big deal, man. That's a very mm -hmm. big deal. And so I think you guys really got to appreciate the the craftsmanship of one David Cerrero for him to be able to get on a record with Jermaine and Jermaine gives him just a couple of pointers. I mean, that's amazing, dude. Mm. Well, Speaking the good thing which, is that um, everything that was offered to to Jermaine was um, a lot of stuff that he has done before, like the same uh, the same type of music and. So he started to sing for me like a lot of, uh, you know, my baby's always dancing. It wouldn't be a bad thing, you know, like, like this. And I told him, okay, how about you, you sing like, line, line, little dee, you know, like more like a crooner type. Yeah. And, and he had this amazing Nat King Cole voice. Wow. You know, like it was unbelievable. And, and I was like, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to record, I'm going to do the arrangement, the production, everything of um, classics of Nat King Cole. And I called it, I Wish You Love. And, uh, and we did a duet together on it, on Autumn Leaves. And where he sang the English version and I sang the original French version. And that duet was like, it went crazy all over France, all over uh, it went big in Russia, even in Chile, in Uruguay, you know, in a lot of countries like that, in uh, Latin wow. America also. So he, in, to this day, people still talk to me about that duet because we did a music video uh, on the, right from the Eiffel Tower, right in from the Paris Opera. Music video went nuts and I directed and produced also that music video. And uh, it, it was very stressful at that time for me to do all of that because I was really beginning as a producer and um and you know to to these days of course i would do it very differently but there was something in those days in in this youth this innocence that i had that that i will never be able to recapture it again uh on uh, on the on the record yeah. i got a question for you mr cerebral before we hang up this uh, call. call me david brother um, no. Mr. David Cerrero, mm. <laughs> we did this before. We had the same conversation before. But you're older than me, I think. I'm 44. So, yeah, uh, you're older than me. Oh, I'm, I'm 49. 
Brother, I'm 39. I guess you, you know? call me sir then. <laughs> yeah, yeah cause, cause you're, sir, of course. You know. No, you call me MC. MC, anyway, brother. Uh, what, what does music mean to you? Oh, it's a way for me to express the love I have for people. That's what it is. And it's a way to, to build bridges among people. It's a, a way to bring people together. And uh, that's what I live for. You know, music is my life. And I've always, through music, after got to movies, got to Shakespeare, got to so many different things. But music is really what, what I love and what I will always 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 love and um it uh you know music has disappointed me i've been betrayed i've been i've been scammed i've been i had i've been through everything but music has never disappointed me you know there's never a day i woke up and i was mad at music you know um so and every time i feel you know so so I sit on the piano and then life is back. You know what I mean? There is, and, and this is really a gift from God music because can you believe that it's the same 12 music for the last four or 500 years, you know? And yeah. uh, we still do different music, genres, jazz, pop, everything, all these songs from just the same 12 music, the same 12 notes, you know? Yeah. It's, it's so music for me is, um, is, is love. Music is life, you know, and, um, I'm passionate about people and I, and I really, really, really do people. That's why I produce, by the way, it's, it's really also to meet new people. And, and, and one thing that I discovered that I realize now that I didn't have maybe 10 years ago is that 10 years ago, it was more about me, 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 you know, like I want my name everywhere, you know? And now I, I realize when I help others, I help myself. Mm. You know what I mean? When you honor other people, you honor yourself, you know? Right. And what I say to other people is be very careful to what you say, because if you hurt other people, it hurts you more than the others, you know? Wow. So that's really what I, um, that, that I will really, really like. And, and the pandemic in a way helped me to uh, reconnect and produce more uh, music, like pure music, not shows, you know, like yes. pure music. Um, because, you know, I have like per season, I have like 10 off Broadway show that I produce. So it's, plus all my concerts, plus the rehearsals, it's, it's crazy. So I never have time usually to do, to really produce music, even for me to find three days, five days of, for recording is impossible. It's really impossible. And uh, so, so this is a good time to do, to do music, to produce music and, uh, and, and create and when things will come back to normal, I will always now save more time to, um, to pure music. You know, I, I will not, even if I have to not produce as much shows of Broadway, I will leave that to do more music, to have a better balance, you know. Makes a lot of sense. So, uh, have you ever thought of producing with other producers? Have you done that, work with other producers? Um, yeah, sometimes uh, for shows, yes. Sometimes you have producers who own a show, by example, or um, they, they produce the show and they want you to uh, uh, bring a new take on it. And, and yeah, don't just produce, also rewrite, also adapt and do anything to, to make it to my taste uh, better. So um, they know that I will make it fresh, that I will make it better. So Yes, sometimes I, I seen work what with you did to Thriller, man. You know. I seen what you did to Thriller. That that just right there is just, uh, that's you, mind bro. blowing, man. It's mind blowing. Thank you, brother. But there's a there's a lot of people that I know would love to work with you, man. I I know one lady to. 
in particular who lives in Orlando. She's from, she graduated Full Sail University. Oh, wow. And she's, she's been watching this show since it started. Oh, and sweet. Um, she's another producer, kind of like yourself. She rearranges things. She likes wow. takes songs apart and puts them back together again. Wow. And she makes well, put her in touch with me. I would love to be, I would love to be, to, 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 to know her and see how we can collaborate. Pa pass yes. her my, my number and my, um, and what I'm my do, uh, email and she can write me on my Instagram if she wants to. And I always reply to, um, to anybody, everybody, I mean. Well, just, just to know her name, so you know it's from me. Her name is uh, Finesse Banks. Finesse Banks, absolutely. So you and get... She's right down here. You look, look down at the bottom, you'll see her Finesse, right yes. Hi, Finesse. How are you? Yes. So definitely we'll... Uh, Write me on Instagram, okay? And we will definitely uh, uh, be yeah, in touch. Oh, my just, email is very easy. It's on my website, davidsurreal.com. It's davidsurrealopera at gmail.com, you know. Yeah, she's, she's really uh, just come. She's, got a, she's coming out on her own, man. She just started. She has two songs she released uh, wow. with two different artists. She doesn't Good. sing. She only produces. So you could be the one singing everything, man. I'm trying to tell I you I would now. be honored. I would be honored. My door is open, as I say, always, brother. Yeah, she's a really cool artist, man. She's a really dope person to collaborate with. I had her on my show before, and I'm mm. going to have her on my show again tomorrow. So wow. if you're, if you're I will available, watch it tomorrow, absolutely. Yeah, if you're available and you're around, you could catch her on the show at six, around 6 p.m., 6 to 7. And then no uh, at 8 p.m., I'm going to have uh, another lady named Zoe Mina on the show and uh she's she did a song with finesse banks called lost they just released it about a couple of days ago and i'll tell you something david it's a really beautiful song man wow. uh i i've never heard a song so emotional other than yours other than yours oh man thank you bro other than yours than theirs i'm telling you dude uh they're really good and but finesse banks she takes a piece, of, uh, like a rap song, and she just like metamorphoses it, man. It's amazing wow, what she does I love music. That. Yeah, she's so young, man. She's 21, dude. And, wow, and good. If, yeah, I'm telling you. Is that your best years? Definitely yeah, your best years. Yeah, she's got a long way to go, man. And, and work with someone like you could really elevate her status in the industry. Oh, uh, man, I would be elevated <laughs> working with her. Pe Kidding people me, so, people yeah. would look at her and look at her and say, damn, you worked with the you work with the the ambassador of the arts. Oh wow. man, what an you're, amazing you're too, experience you're too kind. you had. You're too kind. No, I'm telling you, you see, ah, you, you 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 know, I never met a guy like you, man. You, you're one of uh, the you're dude. sweetest. Yeah, you're I never sweetest. met a guy like you, man. You're, well, you're so send, cool. send to you, brother. Send you're a dope. You. You're a dope. You're a dope person. You're man. dope. You're the definition of dope. If I Google <laughs> dope, I see you. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, hey. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Everybody that watched the live from the beginning to the end. I also want to watch. Thank everybody that watched the live from the middle. And I also want to watch. Or uh, thank everybody for tuning in on this show on IGTV because that's where we'll be at after this live is done. And so, uh, if you have any burning desires, burning desires. Well, now I want to go to Paris to, to see my dad, but I'm kind of stuck in the U.S. because basically if I leave America, I cannot come back, you know, because of the COVID thing, you know. Yes. Um, so it's kind of tricky for me, but um, it is what it is. I have to wait that they reopen the, the, they reopen the borders, basically. Um, so, you know, we'll... we'll, we'll that's my burning desire. And second, honestly, it's the desire to continue what I do. You know, I wouldn't change a thing. And, and uh, I'm at a place now when I don't wish more than what I have. Only that this dream continues. Yes. That's, that's for me the most important. And, and through the way that God ha has created for you, I'm, I'm happy to, that he crosses um, people like yourself, people uh, who are kind enough to look at me and to give me an opportunity and to, to listen to, to, my, uh, to my music, to my work. And 
and share it to others, you know, and uh, everybody is welcome, definitely. Yeah, I think you're a really, really uh, awesome, awesome inspiration to those uh, that want to do what it is you do. So if you had, you know, if you had a um, some advice to give to the youngsters out there who really want to be a playwright or they want to be an author or write or a singer, or a stagehand, whatever it is they could do for the entertainment industry, what would you tell them? Well, there's a, um, one thing, you know, I, I'm going to tell you what happened to me once. Um, I was studying in Russia in, um, in uh, they call it Apshijiti, I forgot how we say in English, like, uh, like some sort of dormitory, you know, and uh, in one night I couldn't sleep. That was before, you know, um, um, that was way before in internet. I mean, there was internet, but not at least now. There, yeah. there was no uh, iPhone, no, no things like that. It's like MSN so, chat No Netflix, there. no nothing like that. So, and I was like, man, I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of not doing things. I'm tired, you know. And then I take a piece of paper, and this is one thing that young people don't do anymore, is that they write on their phones, or they say it's in my head. You have to write things down, you know, and I write, I start to imagine what if tomorrow I had $2 million, mm. you know, and I start to write and Oh, you know what? Of course I would buy a Ferrari. I would get a bigger apartment, you know, but then I would say, you know what? I would call that artist and offer them a contract to do that. I would call a theater, this theater to put this show together. I will build a festival about that. I will, you know, I start yeah. to write two pages of stuff. And then I look again at the list and I'm like, besides the Ferrari and the apartment and everything, all the rest, I didn't need money to do it. Wow. So, but I said, you know what? I'm going to pretend in my head that I have the money to do it. The only thing is I'm going to make a good deal. So I will go to theaters and say, look, I want to collaborate with you. I don't want to bring money on the table, but how about we share the earnings? Wow. So maybe I couldn't have the theater that I wanted, but I could have something a little bit smaller, but with the deal I could afford, you know, or they would say, oh, no, no, we do only rental. Okay. How much do you rent your venue? They say, well, we're at a thousand. So 2000. Okay. I give you half and the rest. I get 80%, you get 20%. So that it also motivates them to do advertising because the more people they have. So morality of the, of, of the story is don't want to be something. I don't want to be a singer. I don't want to be a producer. Is I am a fucking singer. Do you understand you know, yes. you know what I mean? I it, sorry if I curse, but that's, I am, you know, it, it's not, I want, it's, I am, you know, yeah. and, and, and therefore, if you are a writer, that is the example you put, if you are the, the, a writer, then what the writers does, he writes. Mm. So why don't you write? And there is that new thing these days that drive me nuts is people love to blame others for as the reason why they're not succeeding. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yes. I don't succeed because these days people don't, please. Mm -hmm. These days you have emails, brother. You know, you, you know what I mean? You have yeah. YouTube, you have SoundCloud. We, do you know that back in the days you had to do videotape you know, and mail them, you, you, wow. you know, and you had to call to get the address of the person. Do, do you know yeah. what, what, where we come from, you know? So in, in YouTube, when you put a video on YouTube, YouTube does not ask you if you're a man or woman. They don't ask mm -hmm. you if you're white or black. They don't ask you if you're Jewish, Catholic or Muslim. They don't ask you if you're straight or if you're gay. They don't ask you if you are, uh, if you have high notes or you don't have high notes. They don't ask you what your father does in life. You know, they just want to hear you. So people love to use excuses.
But at the end of the day, it comes down to the pen and the piece of paper of what you're writing, you know. And every day I wake up with a, a list of things I want to do, you know. And these are achievements that you're doing. Today, this is what I have achieved. So I would say to people, um, every day put on paper, I insist, on paper. You put the things, not post-its or everything, and then you wake up every day. You don't have to gather around, what am I going to do today? You know directly what you want to do. Design your ambitions. People do not design their ambitions. Design. You say, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that. You know, it might not be the perfect thing, but guess what? You know, nothing is perfect, you know, but it's, it's very important that you, that you work with people. And then, you know, back in the days, I remember even like more than 20 years ago, I, I would take actors from my acting school and we would sit in my small studio in Harlem and sitting on the bed and with the, you know, pizza in the center and we would read plays. And I would call people and say, how about tonight? we read Street Con and Desire and you play this and I play that and, you know, and we do that it, you fun. know, that's, and, and then we can do it, you know. But, I want to do that now. Um, Let's role play. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll that's, be Kaniki. That's, that's what. You be Danny. Yeah. We'll play Grease together. <laughs> oh man, I, I'd love to. It would be, it would be the best version ever, you know. <laughs> yeah, we should do that, man. We should actually do a play of Grease, uh -huh. a small play, a small play. It doesn't have to be huge. And it could just be a few of us acting in it, people that you know. And uh, we could just put it on for, like, like uh, for um, fundraising. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. Something but think but really, to these days, it really comes to um, to the people who who really do things, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, you have to do, and, 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 and I'd be honestly, and to be honest with you, I, I, I make 20 offers per, per day, you know, I'm exaggerating maybe, but the 20 offers a day, maybe there's only one that would say yes, but you have to do what it takes for. And as I said, you as good as your last show as your last production. So it, um, it, and, and also one thing that I realized, especially with the young, younger generation these days, and because uh, it was not like that in my time, 20 years ago when I started, um, people, they care about getting cast, getting a job. But once they get it, they are a total different person. And after they got it, they completely forgot. I always say, if you want to grow in your future, you have to honor and look at your past. You know? Yeah. So, so I always say that, because um, I see a lot these days of artists, or not just artists, but like employees of a company retaliating against their employers and against, you know, people tend to forget that employers, they, a lot of them sold their houses to pay their employees. You know, that this, they work very hard. You have to respect that, you know. Me, every time I'm hired for a gig, I respect, you know, that. That's very important. And uh, I would say really be respectful to any opportunity you have because, you know, I would say it takes one person to write you a check. You know what I mean? You don't need uh, 20 people to write you a check. So, um, you know, Go to one person, you know, you know, when you have a cascade, a cascade of, of ch glasses of champagne, you know, yeah. when you have just one glass at the top, you fill up that one and then it gets full and then it fills up all the others, you know, that's what life is about. Focus on one thing and go boom, 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 boom. And then it will, it will fill up the, 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 the rest, but. That's the difference. The thing I told you about running things, your objective, and, you know, it's the difference between a dream and an objective. Sometimes people ask me, 
what are your dreams? What, what are your, you know, I say I have only one dream is my father to be immortal. You know what I mean? That, that's my only yeah. dream, you know, and live as long as possible. But, but I don't have dreams. I have objectives, you know. And of course, you can put an objective, be number one tomorrow. But how are you going to get there? Get you know, point. you cannot put such a big step. You know, you have to put a lot of, of small, um, I would say, objectives that are reachable because otherwise you're going to get motivated you know, you're going to lose your motivation because you're not reaching to anything, you know? If, yeah. if I reach to have, to be on the cover of the New York Times, you know, most likely it's not going to happen. But if I reach to be, um, you know, to have my music heard by other people, then that is absolutely reachable, you know? So yeah. that, that, that's what I do in, in the, in, you know, and I help, you know, I love to help also other people. So. Yeah. That's hey, important. man, it's been a real pleasure having you on it's the an show, honor. Mr. Cerrito. Really? You are Thank awesome, you, dude, man. You're very talented. And Thank I you, suggest bro. everybody to go to Spotify, YouTube, and all the streaming platforms. And, and, oh, and also check out iHeartRadio because David Cerrito has a show called The Culture News that's on there all the time. So why don't you go <laughs> and check him out because he's always interviewing somebody dope. And it could Thank be you, you, so go check out. David Cerrero. And how do you get on David Cerrero's show? How do they get on your show, Mr. Cerrero? Can you tell well, us people? They can email me and, uh, and I always love to, to welcome people, you know, always. Sometimes they reach out to me, so I respond, but anybody can reach out to me, definitely. That's great. Whether on so, Instagram or anywhere, anywhere. I will have make sure his links will be, and your links will be in the comments section. And, and just, just one second, I'm, I'm giving two quick shout outs to two people who just joined. I see Soroka friends. This is a wonderful organization, the Hospital of Soroka. I okay. performed for them, the wonderful organization. And I saw my favorite Moroccan restaurant, Arabesque, uh, in, uh, in New York City. Arabesque restaurant, really the best Moroccan restaurant. My family is from Morocco, I'm Moroccan. So uh, this is really, really good food. And as soon as they reopen the indoor restaurant, people have to go to Arabesque restaurant that will eat the best couscous. Sorry, I took a second to, right. to, to say couscous. hello to Soroka and Arabesque. I love couscous. I had some couscous from my Moroccan, Moroccan friends out there in Orlando. And wow. they fed me, they fed me good. Anyway, Brother, yes. I will feed you well. When you come to New York, I take you to Arabesque. Yes. So anyway, thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Brother, I gotta anytime. Going. Got to get going, got other guests to talk to, but I appreciate you coming through. I really do. And uh, we will definitely talk again. I want you to come back as soon as your, shop, your album comes out for Thank your you play. Brother. And we can pr promote that. And uh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so proud of you, man. you really done brother, a really I'm proud great of job. You. You're amazing. Yeah, I guess we're both amazing then, man. You are, to... You're more than me, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Right, man, that so means you... a lot. Thank you for the opportunity, brother. I, that, yeah. that really, really means a lot to me. And, uh, and uh, I can wait to, uh, to bring you more stuff. And definitely, uh, when Broadway reopens, I invite you to see um, oh, just, all my shows. I, I will definitely be there. Now that I know that you invited me, I will come out there to see your shows in New York City. I can't wait. It will be my honor, brother. Anytime. I'm looking for I'm bring my wife with me and bring my family. We'll come out I and want enjoy the your, whole family, you know. Yeah, we'll enjoy your show, man. We'll 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 meet up after the show, go to the after party, whatever we got to do, man. I can't Anytime, wait. Anytime, brother. I'm looking forward to it. You stay blessed, you stay safe, man, and keep keep contributing to your craft, man. Keep creating cuz you're very good, man, and I'm very you, very humbled to have met you, man. Keep strong and keep 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 your head up because God's got you. Ah, oh, brother. Same to you, brother. Yeah, all right. Peace to you, The James. best to you, my friend. Thank you. Yes. Take care, brother. Thank you to yes. everyone. Bye-bye, right right, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, man. David Cerrero. Yes. I love that dude. Anyway, coming up in about five minutes is Gabby B. Peace.